Hey guys, welcome back to the channel of Jimmy as promo. Today is June 7th, actually just one minute away from June 8th, but Google just pushed out the latest software update to Android 14. This is making it Android 14 beta 3. Now, I originally started downloading this about four hours ago. It went through the whole entire initiation process. It installed, it downloaded, it did everything. And then for some reason, after it restarted, it didn't really stick, so I had to redo it again. So for some reason, there is a little bit of bugs and issues when it comes down to Android 14 for some reason with this beta program. But we're gonna go through every single thing that is brand new. It's midnight. I'm gonna try to make it as quick as possible. So this one was released on June 7th, and the biggest thing with Android 14 Beta 3 is that it's actually more stable than before, which is kind of ironic with some of the issues I ran into. But let's talk really quick about the timeline. Everything is still the exact same. This is the platform stability. This is now June, and that's the third update that we've had. So here is the beta release. So this is one, two, three. Basically, we have one more beta update in July, and then the final release happening in August. So I accumulated every single thing that is brand new. Really the biggest one that really everybody is talking about is gonna be dealing with that new lock screen. Now with the lock screen, you have multiple different clocks that you can choose from. Now lock screen and home screen used to actually be listed right down here, but because they added in clock color and size, now that is why this one's sitting right here. So these two used to be down here. This option wasn't there at all, but look at all of these different options that you can choose from. Now this one is just really a carousel going around everything. It looks to be right around nine different options that you can choose from. You can also go through the clock colors, the style, the size. So if you wanna change you know, whatever color you would like to use. You can also change the, the brightness of it as well. When you go inside of size, you can change it from dynamic to small. So if you want it to be a little bit smaller, you can. You can go to dynamic. So the clock size changes according to lock screen content. Now, the other thing that's really nice about this one is that as you scroll down, you go to more lock screen options. And then this is a way that you're able to actually change, finally, the shortcuts. Now, originally it was always Google Home and Payments. So now you can finally put in the option for the left shortcut to be a flashlight. And then the right shortcut, you have all these options. You have none. Here's the flashlight. Here's your Google Home. Uh, you have this QR code scanner, which you would have to install the camera app for it. You also have a video camera. The camera itself, do not disturb the wallet that was there from before, and then also mute. So whatever you would like to choose for your little lock screen uh, widgets, you have the option now for the left and also the right. So that is something that's brand new along with all these options for your clock uh, that is a part of the lock screen. Now, once you have all of that set up, another one I wanna show you is the animation that comes when you plug in. So now it actually pops up. It has a little uh, animation that goes around it, even though it's a little, uh, redundant. I mean, 89% is already sitting there inside of the notifications panel. Maybe if you don't have that showing, then maybe this is something that, you know, would come in handy. But anytime you plug in, you'll see this new animation pop up on the very top. Beforehand, it actually just stayed right there. That little pop-up, that little animation is something that's been added and brand new. Now, another small little update. This is one that I just kind of appreciate because I didn't really like what it was stating from before. But when you go inside of system and you go down right here, it says now it says Android 14 when beforehand, uh, all it said was Android upside down cake. So that's another small little change that they did. Uh, they actually stated what it's called, which is Android 14, not whatever this little pre name was, uh, which is upside down cake. We're now at Android 14. Now I wanted to take a look at this screen here because these little fill-ins right there, those little toggles, they are quite a bit more colorful. So there is pretty much more material you. Before this, these colors right here wasn't as vibrant. So definitely when it comes down to the material you, when it comes down to the colors, it looks as if they've added a little bit more there. And it's the same thing here when it comes down to if you were using those app options or the app icons when it comes down to the themed icons. So you can turn this off 
And normally this is what I'm used to. I wanted to play with the themed apps because I wanted to see what it looked like before and after the update. And I noticed there was just a little bit more color than what it was from before. Now, another change that I noticed is that when you go inside of the sounds setting, so let's say that we scroll on down, we go inside of sound and vibration. On the very bottom right here, it says tap and click sounds. Now, originally what it used to say was something else. I'm trying to remember what it was. I took a screenshot of what it was beforehand. So touch sounds, as you can see right here, touch sounds is now known as tap and click sounds. Now, another change that has happened is one that's pretty cool and the animations is also pretty fun. And that is learning the, the little tutorial when it comes down to navigation gestures. So when you go inside of display, and then you scroll on down and you take a look at navigation mode. I am using gestures. Well, this icon is now available where if you tap on this, you can learn. So this is like a new tutorial. So this just lets you know what you can do to go home, how you can go back. You can do it on the left or the right. And then also when it comes down to switch apps, it just wants you to, you know, come up and press and hold and it just lets you know that you've done it correctly. So beforehand, it just kind of showed you what you can do. This animation is the exact same as before, but now you have this right here, which is the tutorial to teach you how to do the gesture navigation. Now this one's gonna be very, very small and it was actually a little hard to find, but because I was taking all these different screenshots before and after, I did notice that it is a little bit more rounded when it comes down to taking screen, uh, screenshots when it comes down to this area here. So this is what it looked like when I was you know, taking a screenshot of this latest update so I can let you guys know what the you know, build number was. And you can see here, it's actually pretty elongated. It's kind of more of a square with slightly rounded corners. Now, if I was to take a screenshot, uh, what you're gonna see is something that is more, you know, a little less long, more rounded. So as this kind of disappears, you can see the small little change that they did there. It's very, very minuscule, but it's not as elongated and it's more uh, rounded of corners when it comes down to these little options when you take a screenshot. Now there are only two things left that I'm waiting to really pop into this little uh, Android 14 update here. Now one of those is gonna be dealing with the predictive back button, which kind of isn't really predictive. It's kind of letting you know and showing you what you are about to go into. So right now it just shows a little back button, but it doesn't show the screen as a preview of what you're about to get into. So soon we'll probably see the fact when you actually do this little back button, it's gonna start to slowly show you the screen you're about to get into because as of right now, it doesn't actually do that. So I'm hoping at some point, it's gonna give you the preview of where you're about to go back into, hopefully with the next update or two. And the other thing that I'm waiting for is gonna be dealing with partial screen record. Now, I don't see it with this one here yet, but there should be an option to where you can completely get rid of everything on the very top, the date, the time, the notifications, and especially if a notification comes through, it's not going to record that uh, at all. It's gonna record every single thing that you want it to record, and it should be called partial recording but hopefully that should be coming very, very soon. So, so far that is pretty much everything that is brand new, everything that I have found. I've even looked online to see if there's anything else that I missed. That is every single thing that's a part of this build. And really one of the important things is that it's more of a stable uh, state when it comes down to developers and people actually using the device as well too. So all of those small little changes is a part of having the device more stable and then also too, very, very close to the full final release. We'll have one more in July with the stable full release happening in August. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe, subscribe on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.